amid the chaos and confusion in the world as we know it today. There is a voice that speaks from the Word of God, a voice in this human wilderness, a voice that belongs to the Reverend Jasper Williams, Jr., pastor of Salem Baptist Church, 2283 Baker Road, Northwest Atlanta, Georgia, where you and yours are invited to worship with Reverend Williams and the Salem family at our 8 a.m. early Sunday service or at our 10.35 a.m. Sunday service. She would, she would come home at first after dark, you know, and then she start coming home nine, ten o'clock, and, and then she start coming home at midnight. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. And I, I, I didn't want to say the wrong thing, because one night I almost did. She came home, it was almost one o'clock, and when she Amen. walked to the door, I said, baby, where you been? Don't ask me where I've been. <laughs> yeah girlfriend just having me a good time. Leave me alone. Then she started coming home three o'clock, four o'clock. Daybreak. Stay gone two days, three days, all week. Months. And here I am now. The, 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 the last time I saw her, she got up late one night and yeah. got one of them funny dresses that had oh, you know. rhinestone wrapped all around her neck and put on that sparkling yeah. jewelry and her cheeks were red and, yes, and I haven't seen her no more. Yes, I've been waiting for months now, weeks and they've turned into years. Oh, yeah. I haven't even got a letter to read. the street talk. I hear the gossip. Yes, sir. They gossiping about my wife and how she's doing. Some of them saying she, she's an old slut now. Amen. That she's standing up on the street corners. Yeah. That she's just whining and dining with everybody come along and huffing and puffing, laying and playing. She having a good time. Amen. I know what they're saying in the streets about my wife. They talk about it. You know, that's the difference in a man who runs around Amen. and a woman who runs around. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To God, sin is just sin. It doesn't matter what the gender is. My dearest beloved, I greet you with grace and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This, the God First Television Ministry, which is a subsidiary of the Jasper Williams Crusade for Christ, has come this the month of March to its eighth month inception. For eight long months, we have been privileged to come into your homes and minister to you through our television ministry. I must say that I know it is God first who has privileged us to come to this milestone, but second to God, it has been you, you who have watched us, you who have taken the time to send the contribution to us, you who have prayed for us, you who have purchased a video, a cassette, or an album, you have been the crux, the foundation upon which this ministry has been built and the nuclei around which this ministry has been sustained. And for you and yours, I want you to know that I am indeed grateful. My name is Hosea. My occupation is prophet of the Lord God, Jehovah. Amen. My prophetic ministry took place in the northern kingdom of Israel somewhere between the years of 750 and 725 B.C. Amen. I have been summoned here today by some of your contemporaries who are part of the apostolic tradition to give you excerpts from my most unusual biography. It was after one of my many prophetic crusades up on the crest of the mountain called Tabor Amen. that I descended the lofty heights of Mount Tabor and as I 
came down the slopes of that mountain, I was enveloped, engulfed, apprehended, yea, I was arrested by some strange, invisible presence. Amen. It was then that I come to realize that I was standing in the presence of the Almighty God. As I stood there in awe, tensed, filled with anxiety, yes, scared, afraid, I heard the voice of God riding upon the bosom of the wind. Amen. And it said unto me, Hosea, I must need talk with you. I want to talk with you, Hosea, about the infidelity of my people. Amen. Hosea, you know about the contractual agreement that I have with my people, Israel. They are to be my people, and I am to be their God. Amen. But because of their apostasy, and because of their immorality, and because of their idolatry, they have allowed their goodness, like the morning dew, to fade into the darknesses of oblivion. Amen. And Israel, Hosea, has dealt treacherously with me. They have violated their covenant. They have broken their contractual agreement. They have ruptured our relationship, fractured our fellowship. Amen. They have allowed idle gods to encroach upon my own private domain. Yes, sir. Well, I stood there and didn't say too much. I just listened. Amen. Because after all, when God speaks, what can you say? Like I heard the commercial the other day, when E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. Amen. When God speaks, the record is not even a dog would bark no. nor wag his tail. No. Plus, I remember out on the stormy sea one day when the cosmic phenomena was disturbed and clouds hovered low and storms began to rage as the wind began to blow and Jesus was asleep in the helm of the ship. They awoke him and asked, Master, carest thou not that he, we perish? And he responded by speaking, Peace be still, and everything got quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Plus the hymnologist of old says, when he spoke, I recognized his voice. Amen. When he spoke, behold, I made my choice. Yes, when he spoke, the fire began to burn, a little wheel began to turn Amen. when he spoke. So God spoke to me, and I stood there listening, and I could hear in the tenor tone of his voice bewilderment. I heard one who was filled with excruciating pain, pain that comes about only when you have experienced a rejected love. Yes, sir. And just at that moment, my mind went to my co-prophet, Ezekiel. I remember how he testified that the hand of the Lord was upon him and carried him out in the spirit of the Lord yes, sir. and set him down in the midst of a valley that was full of dry bones yes, sir. and then grabbed the crevices of his mind so as to teach him a spiritual insight. And God did me, Hosea the same way. Amen. He grabbed right on Mount Tabor the crevices of my mind and then took me on a historical flight. Yes, sir. Allowed me to see the history of Israel oh, yeah. move before my eyes as though it were on a panoramic movie. Amen. I saw how Israel, God's chosen people to the world, had vacillated in their commitment to him. Yes, sir. I saw how they had gone whoring after other gods. Oh, yeah. I saw Israel's debauchery, how they bowed their knees before strange and idolatrous 
shrines. That's all right. And I just stood there and I watched and I listened. And when I came to, behind the devastation I saw, I just knew God would tell me next, Hosea, I'm going to wipe all memory of Israel away from the face of the earth, but to my utter surprise, Amen. he said to me, Hosea, I will have mercy upon the lost house of Judah. That's all right. Hosea, I will save her, not by bow, not by arrow, not by sword, not by battle. But I will save her by the power of my love. Amen. And I heard echoing in the wind again and again and again. I'll save her. I'll save her. I'll save her. I'll save her. Amen. Well, I was appalled. I was flabbergasted. I said, all right, God, if you save her, that's fine. Oh, yeah. uh, but why do you have to tell me? What do I have to do with this? You're going to save Israel? She's your people? Fine. But what about me? So what? And then God says to me, but I need a days man. I need a liaison, a mediator, a go-between. Right. Yes, I need somebody who will stand between me and hear what I have to say and tell Israel, my bride, what I said, I need a day's man, and you, Hosea, become the best one out of every available prophet in the northern kingdom. You are my choice. But I've got to get you ready. Ready, Lord? Yes, I've got to get you ready. What do you mean ready? Well, Hosea, you're not quite ready. You're not familiar with my universal cosmopolitan concept of salvation. You're too limited and you're too finite and restricted. You're too parochial in your thinking and you're not aware of how I love Israel. Oh, you know about Eros, the love that exists between a man and a woman. You know about Philia, the love that exists between a brother and a sister, but I'm talking about the premier of love, the epitome of love. I'm talking about agape, how I, God, love my people. Yes, Your mind is too restrained and you're not aware of the relentlessness of my mercy. Hosea, I've got to get you ready. And in order to get you ready, I must put you through the crucible of a domestic difficulty. Amen. And when I cause turmoil in your family, yes, sir. when I allow you to experience how it feels to live in the midst of a broken home, Amen. then you will be ready. Yes, sir. Well, well, Lord, if you're going to get me ready, uh, what, what are you going to do? What do I have to do for you? Well, I want you first of all, Hosea, I want you to get married. Oh. Married? Yes, you need to be married. You ought not mind marrying, especially since you have an omniscient and an omnicompetent God picking the bride for you. Oh, well, if you're going to pick the bride for me, that's fine because Amen. I know you well enough to know that that you put together, no man can put asunder. And things that you said that, God, you know, I was really seriously thinking about getting married myself because there's this girl who's a little special to me. I've been looking at her. She's been looking at me. And I've talked with a father. A father comes from a strong Jewish Orthodox background and the fact about it, we communicate so well. I mean, we talk and she talks to me and she's there every time I have one of my crusades. The fact about it, she helps me to pass out my Old Testament tracts and I'm certain that she'll make me a good wife and any prophet needs to have a good wife and I appreciate you suggesting that to me. Is it all right if I go on and marry her? How about that God? Is that all right? Shall I marry her? Hosea, you're right. She 
will make somebody a good way. Hosea, I want you to get married. And the woman I want you to get married to, sit down now, because you know we always communicate, but you're going to have to hold your seat. I want you to know that this woman is not a Jew. Amen. Secondly, she is a pagan. Third thing about her, she is a prostitute. That's all right. Now, wait a minute, Lord. You said the woman that you want me to marry is, is not a Jew, and she is a pagan, and then she is a prostitute? Yes, and I want you to go and marry her. Can you imagine when he told me to do such a thing? I said, oh, no, no, no. That's all right. Never, ever will I do such a thing. I shall never marry one who's not a Jew one who is a pagan and then who succumbed so low to being a prostitute. No, never, ever, never. Yes. I will not disgrace my heritage. No. I will not dishonor my religion. No. I will not cast such a slanderous act upon the prophetic fraternity. I will not allow Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Rebekah, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi to look at me strange. Never will I do that. I will not allow myself to be criticized and stigmatized and ostracized as a lover of illicit women. I'd rather die in dignity than to live in disgrace. Yes, oh God, don't make me do never, no, no, never, ever, no, no, no. When I got through ranting and raving and huffing and puffing and cussing and fussing, oh, I heard the still small voice of God saying, <clears throat> as I was saying, Jose. I want you to go marry Goma. She's not a Jew. She is a pagan. She is a prostitute. Jose. Go marry Goma. Go marry. Oh, yeah. You do have faith in me, don't you? Oh, well, Lord, you know I got faith in you. Yeah. I've been with you long enough to have faith. Yeah. But you know, I, I, you told us in your word, whatever we do, it needs to be done in your glory and to your glory. And I can't understand for the life of me. What glory will you get out of me, a prophet? Marrying a prostitute. Amen. What glory will you get by joining together promiscuity with piety? What glory will you get by uniting wretchedness with righteousness? What glory will you get? Coupling the devilish with the divine, what glory will you get? By intercoursing the secular with the sacred, Yes. What glory will you get, God? With me a prophet, her a prostitute. Yes. What glory can you get? Yes, sir. By a confluence of good and bad, the terrestrial, celestial, what glory will you get by adding the horizontal to the perpendicular? What glory will you get? That's all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But God said to me, you can't understand. No. And I will not allow divine omniscience oh, to succumb to the short-sightedness, scrutiny of human disapproval. No. Man, you don't know who I am. No. Your mind is too small, yes, too trivial and minute, too myopic 
to understand I'm God. I'm Jehovah. Yes, sir. I'm the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm Yahweh, Elohim, El Shaddai, All right. Jehovah, Jerah. I am God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you will never understand the immensity of my mind. Come on, I'm God. Oh, yeah. well, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, all right. All right, okay. All right, all right, here, yeah, all right. That's all right. Whatever you say. I don't like what you're telling me to do, but, but uh, I'm Mara. Yes. I ain't crazy about it, but I'll do it. That's all right. But you know what? When I started obeying God, That's all right. when I started doing what I know he told me to do, though I didn't Amen. understand, right then he started shining light on my understanding. That's, all right. That's the way he operated in 750 B.C. That's the way he's still operating in 1989. When you know God tells you to do something, and you do that, you may not understand. But he'll start putting light on your understanding. And as you move along, he'll brighten the way as you go along the way. And I didn't understand, but he started showing me. And then one day, when I marry, he said, all right, Hosea, congratulations to you. You've done what I told you to do. Bless you. Congratulations. You've been obedient. Now I am going to teach you, Hosea. That's all right. All right. Three things you'll see. I want you to see number one, that our God always love the unlovely. Amen. The second thing I want you to see, Hosea, is no matter how much you break, my heart, That's all right. you can never ever break God's love. Sure. And then the last thing I want you to see is that no matter how far down you fall, and no matter how far away you go, yes, a man never falls low enough to get outside the outreach of God's loving hand. And, 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 and you all know when I went on and, and got married to me and Goma, I never shall forget those, oh, those first few days we were married. I mean, she, she was so beautiful and she was such a gorgeous woman. She, she was so exciting. I mean, I mean, that girl was such an elegant. That girl, that, that girl, ooh. Mm. That girl. I mean, you, you're talking about fine. Yes, sir. My wife, Goldman, I was sure enough fine. Her hair was black and silky. Yes, sir. Like raven feathers. Yes, sir. She had those big, long, curly locks running up and down her back. That's all right. Her eyes shined like black sapphire. Yes, sir. In the nighttime, they would glow like dotted pearls. Yeah. Teeth were white like a flock of sheep. Her cheeks were like pieces of pomegranate. Right. They were red like roses. She had lips like threads of scarlet. Her tongue was sweet as a honeycomb. Right. She had features like Venus de Milo, yes, a body like a sculptor's dream. Yes, she had a shape like the figure eight. Yes, when she walked, it was like the gracefulness of an eagle's wing, and she had the strut like a peacock. Yes, and words fell from her lips yes, like poems from shaken stems of lilies. Oma was shown enough. The girl was fine. 
But you know, when we, we got married and then on down the road, things got a little rough. And, and though we're not together now, I'm not the kind of a man who puts all the blame on the woman to say the reason why we didn't make it is her fault. She did this, she did that. I'm, I'm not that kind of man because if I tell the truth about it, she tried. Yeah. Well, she tried to make me a bride. She, she tried to make me the woman she felt I would be proud of. Yeah. One day I was at home and she had gone to the marketplace and had done some shopping and she came home with all these bundles and packages in her hand and, 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 and I met her at the door. I said, baby, what you doing with all of these, these packages? She said, well, I've been shopping. Well, what you do? What you buy? I bought me a new wardrobe. Yes, sir. Because I, I'm a prophet's wife now. My and all those old shop dresses with the long splits, I gave them away because I'm a prophet's wife. She tried, I tell you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just tell you the truth about it. The girl tried to make me a bride. Yes. And then she, 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 she toned down her lipstick. Yes, sir. Got a rouge that wasn't so sparkling. That's and, all right. and, and, and got her some new colored blouses and, and covered up her breast and made sure she had no more low cut dresses on. She tried her to. Yes, sir. Found her new set of friends. And when time came to go to the well, she would go at a decent hour. When nobody was at the well but other women, she wouldn't go in the nighttime when men would be at the well feeling and fumbling. No. She tried. The girl tried. And then people ask me, well, why is it you and your wife are not together? Well, you see, my wife was caught between a push and a pool. That's all right. That was always that war underneath her. She was always at war with her past life. Those old habits, they wouldn't leave her alone. Amen. That's why Paul said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, Amen. not against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. We wrestle against satanic imps, the devil and all of his imps and her whole life was always at war and the people in the synagogue would never let my wife forget where she came from and because she did not have a real commitment to God our marriage got on the rocks and she started going down down down. Amen. She had a spiral downwardness, a yes. progressive depression. She went down, 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 right. down, oh, down. Yes, Not all at once. It never happens all at once. When the devil gets in your life, it's not all at once. Low down dirty scound, he does it bit by bit. Little by little. He starts you off, oh, take a little shot. It won't hurt. But he keeps on until you start glutting up all the liquor. He, he starts off oh, a little hit, won't hurt nobody. Take a drag. It, it'll be all right. Bit by bit. She started going down. When she got to the place, she started playing before food. Yes, sir. She thought that just because we had three babies while we were married, I didn't know that neither one of them were mine. Yes, sir. And, and, and I'm the one who made up the beds. And I'm the one who swept the floor. Yes, sir. I'm the one who mopped the kitchen. I changed the diaper. I'm the one who won the milk. That's all right. And then she would, she would come home at first after dark, you know, and then she'd start coming home 9, 10 o'clock, and, 
Then she started coming home at midnight. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. I, I, I didn't want to say the wrong thing, because one night I almost did. She came home. It was almost 1 o'clock. And when she yeah, walked to the door, I said, Baby, where you been? Don't ask me where I've been. <laughs> Here I with my girlfriend, just having me a good time. Leave me alone. Yeah, yes, sir. Then she started coming home 3 o'clock, 4 yeah. o'clock. Daybreak. Yes, sir. Stay gone two days, three days, all week, yes, all right. months, and here I am now. The, 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 the last time I saw her, she got up late one night and got one of them funny dresses that had rhinestone wrapped all around her neck and put on that sparkling jewelry and her cheeks were red and, yes, and I haven't seen her no more. Right. I've been waiting for months now, weeks, and they've turned into years. I haven't even got a letter to read. I haven't heard no word. Uh, I hear the street talk. I hear the gossip. They gossiping about my wife and how she's doing something I'm saying. She, she's an old slut now. Amen. That she's standing up on the street corners. Yeah. That she's just whining and dining with everybody come along and huffing and puffing, laying and playing. She's having a good time. Amen. I know what they're saying in the streets about my wife. They talk about it. You know, that's the difference in a man who runs around. Amen. And a woman who runs around. Yes. The God sin is just sin. It doesn't matter what the gender is, be it male or female. Uh, uh, a woman is no more wrong than a man. A man is no more wrong than a woman. But society has a way of putting a label on the different. Whenever a man runs around, he can lay here and lay there and lay there and lay there, lay there. Get up! Society tends to say, that's a man. But when a woman lays here, lays there, lays there, lays there, lays there, doesn't call her no woman. Society claims that's a whore. And when I heard them talking about the whoredom of my wife, it broke my heart. And what can you do when you have a broken heart? Amen. You can take aspirins and BCs for the headache. Right. You can take bromo salsa for the stomach ache. Yes, you can wrap down with absorbent junior for the muscle ache. Amen. You can go to a dentist for the toothache. Yes, sir. But ain't nothing you can take to ease the pain of a broken heart. My heart was broken. Yes, yes, sir. So I remember one morning I woke up and, and I decided I gotta get relief. Yes, sir. And the only way I can get relief, I gotta find God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I got up and I started out my house, made sure that the babies were all asleep. And I knew that they stay asleep until I could get up to the mountain and see, see God. Because if I could just find God, I could make some, some sense out of all of this stuff. I got to find God. And when I, when I got up on the mountain, God was already there. I said, God, he said, Jose. I said, God, let me talk. He said, Jose, hush. I'm God. Let me speak first. I said, all right, all right, go on, go on, talk then. I'll wait till you get through. Go on and talk. And then, and then, then God said to me, He said, Jose, where is Goma? Why is Goma? I thought you 
Hosea, 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 calm down now, hold on. Let me ask you one question now. Jose, yeah? How do you feel? What do you mean, how I feel? I mean, you know, this woman who had these babies and thinking I, I'm, I'm the husband of all these children, I know ain't none of mine. And I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm at home all day. She cold, can't find her husband. How I feel? That ain't what I asked, Jose. How do you feel? Well, I mean, you know, everybody laughing at me and they <laughs> they sniggling and they making fun of me, Lord. And when Isaiah and Jeremiah and all those boys see me coming, they they hunting each other. And, <laughs> there he is. There he is. There he is. And you know, that, 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 I'm, I'm embarrassed. Jose, how do you feel? That's all right. Well, well you, know, you know, I don't know man like to be, you know, made no respect. I can't make nobody believe you told me to go marry that woman. Amen. Yeah, and every time I get ready to preach, they, they sniggling at me, and I can't feel the spirit no more. And I, 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 Jose, how do you Feel. That's all right. Oh, God. Well, Lord, eh, ain't nobody up here but me and you, is it? Amen. So uh, I tell you, I, I tell you, I, I love her. What you say? I love her. Didn't hear you. I love her. Say it loud, Jose. What did you say? I love her. I love the woman. I still love her. I can't help that. I love her. Oh, so you love her even though she's had babies outside of your marital affairs. You still got the feeling for still love? Yes, I, I love the woman. I love her. Well, then you're ready now. You're ready now to go preach for me. Yes. Go up off this mountain. Go tell Israel. You know now because I made an example out of you. Just like Goma walked off and left you, Israel, my bride, walked off and left me, and I need somebody to tell her I still love her. Go tell her if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, and pray. Then will they hear from heaven, and I will heal their land. All right, all right, all right. Hosea, from that demonstration that God put him through, became known as the prophet of love. Amen. So, my brother and sister, as I close today, I hope by now you come to realize that that Bible you hold in your hand is really a divine love story. Yes. I hope you can sense and see that all 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 that are in the New, that the 1,189 chapters, the 31,173 verses, the 773,692 words are nothing but a divine love story that shows how God is the lover and how the world is the love. And so, my brother and sister, that's what the Bible is really all about. About how God so loved the world. And you see, God met his bride for the first time down in the flesh pots of Egypt land. Yes, sir. My God, and when she had become slaves and captives, working for the man named Pharaoh. Yes, sir. And God watched how she had to make brick without straw. Yes, and how it is that Pharaoh would put up on her backs stripes from whips 
making her obey his command. And God watched her for a thousand years. And when he first began to watch her, she was without money in her pocket. And she had no clothes to put on her back. And she didn't even have a place that she could call home. Oh, Lord. And God said one day after a thousand years had gone by, it's time now for me to go down and talk with her. And to let Israel know how much I really love her. Oh Lord, and but I need somebody to talk for me. Come on, now. And I heard him saying, "Come here, Moses, and I want you to go down to Egypt land and tell Pharaoh that I said, let my people go." Oh Lord, and for nine times. Pharaoh's heart was hardened and that tenth time I heard God saying well you go down and tell them that uh, my death angel is going to ride through town tonight and the time has come for me to free my bride Israel oh Lord and you know what happened God freed them and when he freed them he brought them on across the Red Sea yeah and then he said Moses bring them here around Mount Sinai yeah and I heard him saying Israel you are my bride and I want you to know I'll be good to you but I got some rules I got some laws I got to write down yeah I want you to know first of all I'm a jealous God yeah and I don't want you winking and blinking and making eyes at no other God my God I want you to come to realize that there's nobody but me yeah and the first law I'm gonna give you now is thou shalt not have no other gods before me thou shalt not bow thy knees before any graven images in heaven above on earth below or down underneath the earth yes and if you be faithful to me I'll put shoes on your feet I'll put clothes around your back yes I'll even give you a place that you can call home oh Lord but oh after 40 years of dating and having a good time with his bride he finally put her in a house he led her to the promised land yeah and you know what the Bible says time she became settled in Canaan land with a house roof over her head clothes on her back shoes on her feet money down in her pocket she started winking and blinking and making eyes to the idol God Baal yeah she bowed her knees before the altars of Baal and then get up and bow her knee before the altar of Jehovah yes and God got tired of her bowing and worshiping to God because you can't love two masters my God and when Malachi spoke he broke off the engagement took his reign back and closed up the heavens for 400 years and not one word was heard from the Lord for 400 years did you hear what I'm saying but oh one day yeah yeah 
just one day one day that old lonely feeling got out in God's heart yeah that same feeling that made him make man in his own image and give the world Adam God got lonely one day and I heard him say I want my bride back who will go and then whom shall I send yeah and I heard Gabriel saying Lord let Abraham go but the Lord said no Abraham lies too much he lied down in Egypt land and told Pharaoh Sarah was his sister and not his wife he cannot go well Lord how about letting Noah go no Noah got a drinking problem if I let Noah go the first bar he sees the first saloon he sees my bride will never get my answer yeah well how about letting Solomon go he can't go he loved women too much and if I let Solomon go the first dress tail he sees he'll be running off after her and they'll never get my answer yeah but by that time that was a rumbling and a tumbling that was a shaking and a quaking and God stooped down and young was a lamb that had been slain since the foundation of the world I heard Jesus saying I'll go did y'all hear what I'm saying I'll go I'll go if I have to go all by myself and you know he came down don't you he died anybody here know he died he died he died yes he died hey Sunday morning did you hear what I'm saying Early Sunday morning he got up out of a dusty grave I heard him saying Was wrapped in my hand did you hear what I'm saying God bless your heart I'm trying to stop her but I got one more thing to tell you Jose was out there in the yard and somebody came along and said Jose they got Goma up on the auction block you better go by they're getting ready to auction her off Jose went and got her every dime he had ran down to the auction and paid the price for her and bought her back that's what Jesus did when we sinned on Calvary he paid the price and brought us back do I have a witness that's why I can say today I'm saved I want to have me a witness here I'm saved sanctified and I'm made holy because he bought me back yes he did Jesus doesn't need you to be a slave today he just wants a wife today can he count on you I said can he count on you are you willing are you ready will you say Lord I'll go to go all by myself I'll go the doors of the church are now opened for the exception of members to come by letter to come by Christian experience or as a candidate for baptism that's what the whole plan of salvation is all about which means if you're not in the church 
It's not a matter, preacher, I'm not living right. That doesn't matter. Doesn't matter about our committed murder, sodomy, rape, drug addiction, incest. Just doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that since God's Son has come to the world and you reject that, that's the thing that starts you to hell because sin has been forgiven. They're going to sing for you, God so loved the world and the doors of the Lord's house is open for you to come to Jesus. Sisters, listen to them. praise today. God bless you. I hope, trust, and pray that the sermon you've listened to today of I Fell in Love with a Prostitute has met some spiritual need in your life. I want you to tune in to us next Sunday. Same time, same place, the same station. If we had more time, we would be able to play a sermon like this today all the way through, through its entirety. However, to get more time, I have to pay more money, and I need you and yours to assist us toward that end. If you'll sit down and write a check to the Jasper Williams Crusade for Christ or the God First Ministry, it will certainly help us to do that. We can get more qualitative equipment and therefore bring you a better qualitative telecast and with longer time, longer hours, and therefore, hopefully minister more to your needs. I want to teach, I want to preach, I want to reach. Now, for the sermon that you just heard, then how you may go about getting it, we have it in three different forms. You see the picture of myself on this beautiful case, dressed as the prophet Hosea, preaching the sermon, I fell in love with a prostitute. 
This holder contains two cassettes, however. One is the sermon, the other is Reverend Jasper Williams sings. I have a cassette sermon or tape that we made some years ago wherein I am singing. It is a double album. A prayer is on it as well as many selections of song, Peace in the Valley, Sister Dorothy Peoples and myself are doing World's Greatest Love of All. Also, I Did It God's Way. Many, many other selections are coupled with this sermon, I Fell in Love with a Prostitute. Also, if you would like to have this sermon, we can give it to you in a video uh, alone. Plus, you can get the cassette uh, sings Reverend Jasper Williams with the prayer and the songs all coupled together. Let me show you now what you'll have to do. If you'd like to get the two cassettes with the picture of myself on the front, which contains the two cassettes on the inside, you'll have to send us a $15 contribution, and that will entitle you to receive both of these cassettes. If you would like to have the video of the sermon you just saw, plus the cassette Reverend Jasper Williams sings, send us a $25 donation, we'll gladly respond. However, if it is just your choice to have the video, then a $20 contribution is what we are asking you to do. Get on the telephones. Call my counselors and the people who are there to service you. Call my operators. They'll gladly tell you about these various combinations of how you can get it in the two cassettes the video and the Reverend Jasper Williams Sings cassette, which is a kind of added addendum. You see the post office box on the screen in front of you, plus our numbers. Send us a check. Help us to get more time. Help us to increase and expand the base of the Jasper Williams Crusade for Christ and this God First television ministry. It's been a blessing to us to be able to hopefully be a mechanism through which you have been blessed. Continue to pray for us. Continue to support us. Continue to keep us in your prayers. God bless you. God keep you. Until next week now, call me now. Write me right away. For your own copy of this endearing sermon, Send a contribution of $15 or more for the two audio cassettes, $25 or more for the video and audio cassettes, and $20 or more for the video cassette. Help this man of God to spread the word of salvation around this nation by sending your tax-deductible contribution to the Jasper Williams Crusade for Christ, P.O. Box 94088, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318, or call our toll-free number, 1-800-FOR-GOD-FIRST. That's 1-800-446-3178. In Georgia, area code 404-792-5656. You can use your Visa or MasterCard when ordering. Join us again next week. And remember to seek God first.